All right, welcome to this lesson on how to build mental strength. And we've been training the mind here in this course. Mental fitness training is largely done through meditation and intentionally working with the mind to rewire it and exercise certain muscles. We haven't really talked about what do we mean by a strong mind. I actually got a quote the other day on this yogi tea that I was drinking that said a peaceful mind is a strong mind. And I love that because that's actually what we're going for here is a mind that remains balanced no matter what's happening around it, no matter the external circumstances. Normally the mind is kind of reaching for pleasure and pushing away painful experiences. And this tug of war all day creates a lot of tension. And it's also a game we can't really win because pleasures are so f fleeting and they're, they're relative. So we can only experience something as pleasurable for so long and then we kind of get used to it, which is called tolerance and drug addiction. But there's another kind of bliss that's the result of a fit mind. And this relates to equanimity, which you just trained in the guided meditation. There are many wisdom traditions that have recognized equanimity as kind of the, the peak of mental fitness and the culmination of the training. One of these traditions are the Stoics of ancient Greece and Rome. They had a word for this called ataraxia. The Greek philosopher Epicurus called ataraxia, quote, the greatest pleasure that a human can achieve, end quote. And then Pyro, who traveled with Alexander the Great in India, called it, quote, a state of lucid and calm awareness, end quote. So this is a mind that doesn't mind what's happening. And that's a superpower because normally we're trying to put the world in perfect order, which it never can be exactly. And so if the mind becomes fluid enough to accept how things are going, even when they're messy, well, that is a strong and fit mind. Psychologist Abraham Maslow wrote a lot about peak experiences. And later in life, he became more interested in what's called, quote unquote, the plateau experience, which is bringing the mind that's been heavily developed and had a lot of peak experiences, bringing that kind of balanced mind into everyday life. So this is a well-being that remains kind of no matter what's happening and in everyday life with neighbors, friends, and just, you know, in your very home and yard. And often when we're thinking about the mental Olympians who were off in caves or people who have gone to exotic places or doing exotic practices to experience these very intense peak experiences, the actual training that we're developing here is more about feeling a sense of balance in everyday life, in normal experiences like waiting for the microwave to finish, when we might be tempted to rush through or hurry to our next activity or be a little impatient or pull out the phone. But if our mind can be balanced, then the mind is strong and it's comfortable no matter what's happening. So how does our mental fitness training here build mental strength? Well, one way is through continual presence, through a mind that is with your object of meditation, whether it's the metta, compassion, delight, or equanimity. It's resting in that feeling and it's picking up certain data points. It's noticing as positive experiences come by and negative experiences. And instead of chasing after them, it's just noticing, oh, there's a positive, you know, there's a pleasant feeling, there's an unpleasant feeling, pleasant, unpleasant. And it notices how all these little ups and downs just aren't worth get, getting worked up over. It sees that enough and then it's no longer shaken because it has kind of seen the story play out over and over again. It's kind of like on a micro level of how people who are older and have lived through a lot of ups and downs are often wiser because they've seen, oh yeah, you know, I've been been through that. Yeah, the markets, you know, I've been through d depressions. I've been through highs. I've been through lows. And so they're just not as bothered. They're not going to 
get as worked up if things don't go their way because they've seen it all before. You're kind of training that with like thousands of little moments throughout the day if you're present and not trying to fix things, not trying to fix every little thing, every little itch, every little... These are just data points you pick up if you're resting in a positive emotional state and not reacting to what's happening. And this is like a fun inner game. It's can you remain in this bubble of collected meta awareness, just remaining aware, remaining content, and being okay with the way things are. And that's the way that a strong mind gets trained. And then you can use the four R's, which really help with this. So you can recognize what took away your meta awareness, like regrets or future worries or disliking what's happening. You know, there's a bug that's bothering you or a crinkle in your pants or a stain on your shirt that you've been worried about. And just recognizing like, okay, that's taken the mind out of this state of calm and I'll release it. I won't feed it any more attention. I'll just let it be there. This is easier said than done, of course. You might have to do that a few times to just kind of unclench the fist that your mind has wrapped into. Like, I got to fix that. I got to fix that. Relax. Open the mind. And then smile and relish. Enjoy what's there. Enjoy a positive emotion. So you could bring up metta, compassion, delight. Their gratitude is a variation of delight or equanimity, a feeling of calm. And then remain with that feeling, and that will help your mind balance out. And when you do that, that's like a mental bicep curl that's strengthening your mind and making it fit over time as you do more reps. And apparently, the pinnacle of Sufi training occurred according to Master Al Muradin makes one, quote, immune to the effects of the changeful states of mind or harsh circumstances, end quote. So I've already mentioned that top contemplative scientists propose equanimity as an outcome measure as, quote, potentially the most important psychological element in the improvement of well-being, end quote. So they proposed equanimity as like an outcome measure to say, to measure how well people are doing at meditation, how much their mental fitness is improving. And it's something you can just look internally and see for yourself. Is my mind becoming more balanced? Am I starting to be okay and at ease more often in my life and with what's happening around me? Your daily challenge today is to recognize what destabilizes your mind and then see if you can bring some equanimity to it. And I'll see you tomorrow for another training session.